Hello everyone, this is Chemdork, and welcome to another video. In this video, we will be doing a playthrough of what is arguably one of the best platforming games of all time. And that is Super Mario Bros. 3 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES. Um, this is, like I said, arguably the best platformer of all time, so if you have never played this game, you really need to go ahead and play it. Um, we'll be doing a playthrough of this game where I'll be using the warp whistles, so I will be warping through levels, uh, so I'm not going to play every stage in the game. Uh, if you want me to do that, I can, but it would just take uh, quite a while, so qu quite a long while to do that. I think the speedrunning record for doing every stage is like an hour, and I will un undoubtedly have to do it much longer. So I didn't think you guys wanted to see all that, so I'm going to be doing some warp whistles. We're going to be probably looking at about three parts, maybe four. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. So this is World 1. Uh, I'll be doing it like I normally do, which is kind of... I go through games fairly quickly. So that's kind of my pace. I kind of hold the B button and just get to it. But uh, that's just how I play it. So this is, this is Super Mario Bros. 3. Again, we are, we are doing gaming at its best. Classic console gaming right here. This is the heyday of the Nintendo Entertainment System when it was awesome. So you just saw the first power-up you see here. It's uh, when you grab a leaf. Doesn't really make much sense, but apparently you turn into a raccoon. And uh, being a raccoon gives you inexplicably the power to fly. I don't know what the Japanese people or uh, Shigeru Miyamoto was thinking when he thought of this, but hey, it works perfectly in this game. Uh, so I gotta credit him with that. It, ma it makes a ridiculously fun game to play. So, uh, hopefully this will remain ridiculously fun, remain, I'm sorry, remain ridiculously fun throughout this whole experience, because this game gets pretty difficult, especially in the later stages. Um, so, uh, I'll try not to use any cheap items like a, a P-Wing, which basically gives you the ability to fly um, for infinity as much as you want through a stage, so you can basically fly right over a stage. I have used it before, sure, uh, and sometimes I do it, you know, myself, but we'll try not to. Um, if I have to, I, I might. So in uh, this stage, we'll be doing something fun. Uh, right now, I'm gonna do, uh, it's one of the few areas where you can get infinite lives. So this is, if you see, that you have a, basically an infinite supply of Goombas that keep coming out of here. And if you jump with the raccoon suit here, you can float in the air, and if you jump in the air, Without touching the ground, you eventually rack up the points until, as you see, you get 1-ups. And you can just basically keep on doing this for as long as you want. There is a little bit... it's not quite Infinity Lives here, because, as you see, there's there's a little bit of a lag every now and then. I think it dumps out 3, and then there's this pause. Uh, and that, that typically kills you, in terms of being able to do this forever. So, eh, we'll get to like 20. We'll get to 20 lives, and that, that'll be enough for us. I'm sure I won't need 20 lives. If it's 20 lives, you guys will die of boredom through this whole thing. Alright. There we go. Because I'll just keep on failing over and over and over again. It's not like I, I, I haven't done that before. I, 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 I fail often at this game sometimes. Come on. Uh oh. But, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll try not to fail that much through this experience, but I can't make any guarantees. Ah, oh, nice kind of fun little things you can do in this game. We'll be using this technique a little later in Bowser's Castle, actually, for getting through a secret area. Oop. Oop. Uh, well, we'll do it this way. There's a little star in this one. Usually I don't go through this level so slowly, but uh, it happens. Bam. Yay. We'll try to get stars on all those cards at the end, because if you get all, if you get three stars, you get uh, five one-ups. If you get a mixture that doesn't match, it's just one one up. So, okay, this is one three. This is the first. Um, oh, this is the first place where you get a warp whistle. So, uh, but before we do that, we get to go into fun places. We get to do this, which is pretty fun. And then you have Coin Heaven right here. Of course, there's the secret in Coin Heaven. It doesn't just have coins, it has a 1-up, so if you didn't know that, it's it's up here. So when you get to about this area where you see the clouds start going up, get up your speed and fly. Oh, come on. There we go. And there's a 1-up. So if you didn't know that, now you do. 
You can say, thank you, Kemdorn. Thank you for teaching me something. All right, now we could end the level here, but we're not gonna, because we need to do this secret thing. Now, this is just bizarre. If you had to um, figure this out on your own, it would never happen. So I don't know who figured this out, or whether it was like a leaked information. Actually, no, it, no, it was leaked because it was in the movie, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But basically, you hold down on this white block, you fall through the scenery, and then you uh, run to the end of the level and grab yourself a warp whistle. So yeah, I think the the way that everybody knew how to do that was well, was, was it in the movie? I don't remember. But there is a basically there is a movie called The Wizard. Uh, you can't talk about Super Mario Bros. 3 without talking about The Wizard. And uh, in this movie, that starred Fred Savage, and he was the brother of this, I guess, gaming wizard kid and whatnot. And basically, the movie was a big commercial for Nintendo. And at the end, the game that was unveiled, it was Super Mario Bros. 3. It was a big, big, uh, big thing, big to do. And you got to see them playing, you know, gameplay of this game that hasn't, been, that wasn't released yet, and so everybody was really kind of excited to see it. Again, it was a very, it was basically a promotional video for Nintendo. So um, now I don't have to do this level, but I did it anyways because it, um, it we can get a P wing from it, and I want to try for it. Basically, there's a, there's one level in each of these worlds where if you get enough coins in the level you will trigger an event where it will make a white mushroom house appear. So we will try to do that in this level. I usually can do it. So hopefully we can do this in this round. I sure hope so. Yeah. Also get all the one-ups that you can on this level as well. Uh, there's only one tricky part, which is kind of over here. It's getting all these coins, plus... Mm, I don't know if we're going to get this. Plus breaking enough of these blocks. That stupid coin block is way up there. I don't know if we got it. It, it looks like we did, but I've gotten through this where it looked like I got them all and I didn't. So, um, and it was because of that, that, that block right there. Okay, let's try to get all stars. Eee! Oh, Almost. Well, let's see if we made the white mushroom house up here. And... Yay! There it is. And this always gives you a special item. So, um, in this, in this world it is a P-Wing. Which again makes you a raccoon and makes you have infinite flying power. So it's really helpful sometimes. Um, I never like these, I typically skip them, but for the purposes of this playthrough, let's do it. Uh, basically, you line up the things and you. Yeah, you try to get one ups. But we made a star with a. Uh, we made a flower with a star for a top. Yeah, nothing fun. Um, this is the second warp whistle, is right in here. Eh, I don't want that. Uh, this this one you actually saw the not not Fred Savage again. He wasn't the guy, but it was uh, his brother. And the, you saw him actually knowing for some reason in the movie how to get this warp whistle. Again, there's no way he should have been able to know this. This was like the first time this game was unveiled. Why would you know to go up here and go to the end and go through the door and grab this warp whistle? It's, it, it was. It, it's a hilarious movie because it's hilariously bad. It's um, uh, but but it, it's it's a it's a classic hilariously bad movie. But kind of fun at that. All right, let's, oh come on! I totally didn't didn't deserve that. Uh, there is a coin heaven here, but we're not gonna we're not gonna go into it because I don't want to. It's quicker this way. And here, that's where you'd fall out in that pipe. Um. Only had enough energy for one fireball, huh? Hmm. Interesting. Come on. Shoom, star. Usually you can get a star if you run like that. If you have to walk into it, um, typically I don't get a star. It's just unfortunate. Alright. Number six, one six. Sometimes I have issues with this level for some weird reason. Don't know why. I like do something really dumb and then I just fall down and fall to my death. It happens. But not this time. Flying. We'll fly right to the end of the level. Give myself enough room so I can grab a star, maybe? No. Eh, I don't always get one. That's okay. We have plenty of lives. Hey, an end spade. 
which is what I call these things. I don't know what they are. But basically, it's a memory game. So you pick one to flip it over, and then a oh, stupid star. And then you have to match it. Well, maybe this one? Yay, okay, all right. Uh, I, I do remember the layout of some of these. Yes! Um, it's not always the same. What do I... No, no, it's not that. Oh, I think this one has an one up. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird how I remember this stuff. Oh, wow. I... Uh, maybe that one? Wow, I'm doing awesome here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> again, guys, I played this game a lot as a kid, so... Um, okay, now I'm stumped. It might be that. No, oh, I was pretty close. Wow, that was really close. That, that's ridiculous how good my memory is. Um, I, I guess I'm pretty good at that memory game. Huh? Well, if you play it enough. Hey, cool. So, sometimes you get something in one of these, but um, not all the time. I don't want that. We'll stay uh, Raccoon Mario. He's the most useful, he's the most useful power-up, I'd say, in this game because it allows you to float everywhere. It's very nice. So hopefully we'll get a leaf in one of these. Okay, they're the most useful. Yay! Wow, we got a lot of items from that end spade thing. That'll be very useful. Um, so okay, first boss. So the uh, the, the sort of, sort of storyline here is, again, the kings of all these worlds have been transformed because the Koopalings have stolen the magic wand. And what Koopalings are, they're basically Bowser's, I guess, children? It's kind of strange because there is no Mrs. Bowser, as far as I know, and he has eight of these children, so... And they're all different, very, very different, so it doesn't look like they came from the same mama. So I think Bowser is just getting busy with some random reptile, I guess? Um, and, uh... Yeah, he was doing the nasty with some reptile. Some eight different reptiles? Either that or... Mrs. Bowser had, um, octuplets. So, I don't know. Something strange is going... Some, something a little morally um, questionable is happening in the Bowser house, household, I'd say that. That, that. That's probably what's going on there. Oh boy. Man, I wish I got that power up now. Oh well. Yeah. Let's see, sometimes I actually, for some reason, do some stupid thing on this. Like, almost die. Like, there. Oh. Well, I didn't die, at least. Be dumb. If I did die, what happens is the airship uh, moves around the map randomly, and so if you if you didn't complete every stage, there's always a chance that you'll have to basically complete a stage in order to get to the airship again. So yeah, it's like that. I saved the king! Hooray! He's a king again. Looking vaguely Arab. Actually, not that vaguely. Um. So yeah. Don't know about that. We get another P-Wing. Thank you, Princess Toadstool. Don't know how you gave me an item in a letter, but, you know, that's cool. It says it's enclosed is a jewel that helps protect you. It's not really a jewel. It's an item. So let's use uh, our first warp whistle. Um, and once we get to the dark world, that will be it. So again, look at all these worlds we're skipping. Um, but here's warp seven, world seven. And a warp whistle again to the wonderful world, the wonderful world of World Eight. Bleh. Yeah, there we go. So we got 26 lives. I think we'll be all right here. Um, but this is probably a good place to cut it. So um, because it's 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 uh, I have my stopwatch here, so I can actually keep time. And it's almost 15 minutes, which is what I'd like to cut these to. So, alright guys, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one, and uh, stay tuned for part two.